It's Gospel of Mark, 8th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. We always stand when we read the Gospel out of respect for Jesus. After Peter confesses his belief that Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus tells his disciples for the first time what is to come. Peter's response indicates that he does not yet understand the way of the cross that Jesus will travel. Jesus, let's read this together. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So during Lent as a congregation, we are attempting to reflect theologically about suffering and finding hope in the midst of suffering is our goal. In the Wednesday night class and in today's sermon, I'm asking this question. How does our suffering impact our Christian witness? How does suffering aid our telling others about God? How do the trials that we experience feed the flame of our witness, of our testimony of faith? Let me start by making a bold statement of faith. As Christians, suffering gives us an amazing opportunity to share our faith. When we suffer, when we put our faith into action, people want to know, what makes you different? How can you do that? Why are you not bitter? Why haven't the flames of suffering destroyed you, especially when the heat seems unbearable? John Newton who was the, the author and the composer of the world's favorite hymn, Amazing Grace, Newton loved to compare faithful Christians who suffered with the burning bush, the burning bush that Moses encountered in the book of Exodus. To summarize Newton's example, he said, some people are called to endure a, a disproportionate amount of suffering. These Christians are a spectacle of amazing grace to the world. They are like the flaming, unconsumed bush. They cause us to ask, like Moses, why is this person or why is this bush not consumed, not burned up with all that's going on? John Newton said that the sufferer's strength can be explained only by the miracle of God's amazing grace. That the God who sustains us in unceasing pain is the same God with the same grace who sustains us all, even in our smaller day-to-day -day sufferings. So we marvel at God's sustaining amazing grace. We grow in our confidence in God as God governs our lives. Even suffering can be an experience of grace. When a believer suffers, and suffers well, I mean with dignity and with faith, it does change the world because the world seeks at all times to avoid suffering. And there's nothing unusual about being a Christian during times of prosperity. That is expected and natural. But joy in suffering is unusual, even supernatural. We take notice. The world takes notice. Like Moses at the burning bush, we step aside to see why they are not destroyed, consumed. So the point of today's sermon is this, that it is in our darkest moments, our hottest fires, 
in our deepest pain that we have the greatest opportunity to share our faith. People will want to know what is the reason for our hope. Now, in the Bible lesson we just read, Jesus, for the very first time, lays it all out for the disciples regarding his suffering. He clearly explains to them that he must suffer, be rejected, be killed on, his, on the cross. This is his destiny, he says, his calling, his, his purpose. Then he says that we are to deny ourselves and follow him by taking up our cross to suffer along with him and through our suffering to find redemption and purpose and ultimately resurrection. Let me read you from uh, our book that we're all reading. And, And please read this book, even if you don't come to the class. Let me read to you a passage uh, about carrying the cross. Viktor Frankl, who's the author, is Jewish, but he even uses this concept of carrying the cross. He writes, if there is a meaning in life, then there must be a meaning in suffering. The way in which you accept your fate and all the suffering that comes with it, the way in which you take up your cross gives you an opportunity, even under the most difficult circumstances, to have deeper meaning in your life. So here lies the chance for you either to make use of or to forego the opportunities of attaining the moral values that a difficult situation will give you. And this decides whether you are worthy of your suffering or not. Now, these are more than just pretty words. Do you believe that your suffering is somehow redemptive? Everything that happens in life is an opportunity to proclaim the gospel. I want to repeat that. Everything that happens in your life is an opportunity to proclaim the gospel. Now, I must confess that proclaiming the gospel is not my first thought or priority when I am in pain and suffering. My first thought is, oh Lord, please don't let this happen to me. Help me, save me, deliver me. You see how religious I am? I'm even calling on the name of the Lord. But it's, oh Lord, take this suffering from me. But even amid the cries for help, I can be a witness to others. And there are some painful awful opportunities in life and few of us will probably ever have to give up our life for the sake of the gospel and and hopefully not all of us will have an indescribable extraordinary time of suffering due to some illness or terrible hardship but we know that life does include times of suffering it is inevitable and unavoidable so here's the message for today Each one of us, we can show the power and the presence of Jesus to others, even in our mundane, often daily trials. People want to see how do we respond to our challenges if we are people of faith. Maybe it's a difficult home life or or our chronic pain or an awful boss or financial struggles or an ailing parent or an unwanted sudden job loss. The situations we wish were most different are very likely the places where we're being watched most closely. These are opportunities for us to share how Christ meets us in our suffering. And this will sound odd, but don't waste your suffering. Suffering is far too valuable. In our book, Frankel quotes Dostoevsky, who writes, there is only one thing I dread, not to be worthy of my suffering. Don't waste your suffering. God is using it in a thousand good ways that we will probably never see or know, but one way is to advance the gospel, to show people about the hope in your life, to tell how God has met you, to to witness how your faith makes a difference in your trials. And that, that's the most powerful witness you have. Our suffering feeds the flame of witness. Tell us how your strength, how your help comes from God. Inspire us with your faith, even amidst your pain and suffering. Amen. Blessings.